Hello, and welcome to Hysteria. I'm Erin Ryan. And I'm Alyssa Mastromonaco. Well, Alyssa, at least we didn't get Wednesdayed this week. We didn't get Wednesdayed. We didn't get Wednesdayed. Um, a Hysteria listener on Twitter pointed this out, and it was the first time that I smiled or laughed after news broke that the Supreme Court is about to really uh, stick it to Roe v. Wade. And by stick it to, I mean totally dismantle it. Um, at least it didn't happen on a Wednesday. Didn't happen on a Wednesday. We get to we get to talk about this bullshit in all its glory. Yeah. Um, you know, let's first, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about where we're at with it. Um, I know mm -hmm. this is something that we expected to happen, not the leak, but we did expect uh, the Supreme Court to take Row apart, but it seems like the extent to which Samuel Alito, very emotional man, by the way, Anger very a, unhinged, almost like, deranged. Like this is a deranged. Like, should he be able to drive a car? I don't know. I mean, his hormones, right? Are like raging male hormones. Like God, have you ever I seen don't a guy? know if he should be making financial decisions, let alone decisions I mean, like this. Like the dude is is just in missed a layup punching a wall territory, except he made the layup. Like he's trying to yeah. shoot shoot. He's like uh, Samuel Alito wrote this this draft opinion, which apparently was a draft opinion back in February. It got leaked to two journalists at Politico. Um in an unprecedented manner, which if you turn on cable news, people I find it funny the extent to which cable news pundits overestimate how much American, regular Americans give a fucking shit about how unprecedented this is. Not to like, totally. you know, not to put down like, you know, Supreme Court reporters because this is a there this is a seismic event in in their lives and in their professions. But like, I really think sometimes the people that are talking about the news on cable news need to recalibrate and say, who am I saying this for? And who am I saying this to? And how much airtime am I giving to something that Americans are just sort of like, okay, like, you know, this is a big deal. The funny thing is, is that like, so we were texting about this and here's what I noticed because you know, I'm very thorough is that people whose uh, SCOTUS opinions we truly care about led with the opinion and followed with the leak, right? It was just the really tacky, gross, like, political reporters that were like, this leak is unprecedented. And it's like, yeah, you're saying that because six months ago you were like, it's not going to get overturned. <laughs> well, also, like, um, yeah, like trying to make a story that is about – women's bodily autonomy, the bodily autonomy of anybody with a uterus, anybody who can get pregnant. This is a story about women. This is not a story about reporting. Like, this isn't a story, a story about journalisming. Although it's a great journalism story separately, the A1 above the fold here is the fact that 73 million people in this country who are people with female anatomy, women of reproductive age, are about to have their rights decided they do, like take it away from them after almost 50 years after almost 50 years um Alito's opinion a uh, draft opinion uh he's joined by the usual suspects of uh Thomas Gorsuch Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh which gives them the non fab 5 it, it it not only takes Roe down, it says that there, that abortion doesn't appear mm -hmm. in the Constitution, and so therefore it's not a right guaranteed by the Constitution. But you know what else doesn't appear in the Constitution? What? The word kidney. What if I am a match to Samuel Alito's kidneys? Like, there is no... Samuel Alito has no fundamental right to both kidneys. I might have drank enough in the last week that I might need a new kidney someday. And it might be Samuel Alito's. There is no fun. I mean, I'm being like really over the top here, but like. He was so over a top. We're allowed to answer his over the topness with our own over the topness. Yeah. I mean, the word, the word, does the word child appear in the Constitution? I don't think it does. Does the word mm -mm. woman, the word woman doesn't appear in the Constitution. Um, no. Nope. Essentially, Alito argues, and, and, you know, we're not lawyers. We're just. 
people who can read um, that because the because abortion doesn't appear in the Constitution, it is not a right that is guaranteed by the Constitution. But there isn't there an amendment that says not every single right that people are entitled to is listed in the Constitution? Yeah, pretty clearly. There is. I think so. Um, right? Yeah. But regardless. Um, Alyssa, why don't you walk me through where you were when you found out about this and what you th- – what your feelings are about this and what is to be done, if anything. Oh, what's to be done? You're adorable. Um, I was, I had just put my phone away. How funny is that? I was like, I'm going to watch some not news, put my jammies on, sat on the sofa, ready to go. Husband comes home from dinner and is like, can you believe this shit? And I was like, what? And he's like, you're so calm. And I was like, "Um, what is going on? And then he showed me the article and I mean, look, we've been talking about this for almost 200 episodes, Aaron. like give or take. This is something we have focused on for uh, – as something that we think is really important that should be talked about. And we've been saying this could happen. We've been talking about all the things. We've been talking about trigger laws. We've been talking about things happening in the states and all the legislation that's been moving through. And unfortunately – we weren't just right. Like, they're not just eroding, Wade. They This is more – I think it's more catastrophic than we even could have truly predicted. Like, this seemed like on the spectrum, the most diabolical, over-the-top outcome. And so I think that we were both pretty prepared for – Things to be eroded, for Roe to be weakened, not utterly dismantled. And, you know, I think that to the last part of your question about what we can do, there's there's not a ton in this moment that can be done. One, the opinion needs to come out. And the minute the opinion comes out, if it's pretty much what it says now, I mean, abortion will be immediately illegal in like 13 states. 26 states with trigger laws of some kind, immediately illegal in 13. And it's effectively illegal in in places already and for people in certain situations already. Like it's, you know, if you're a person who is a, a woman in poverty living in rural Texas, you, you're SOL. And you've been like SOL. If you were in Texas, you were trying to go to Oklahoma, and now you can't go to Oklahoma anymore. It's yeah, Colorado is is really yep. overrun. Arkansas, there's just like it's it's really it's already really bad. And you know, one thing that was really disturbing that some legal analysts are pointing out is that this ruling um, really opens the door for other rights to be taken away, like the right to gay marriage. Um, Alito argues that the Constitution doesn't guarantee a right to privacy, essentially, uh, which would make uh, it legal for states to regulate birth control access. Um, I, 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 this is all, and you know, if one fucking centrist dipshit speaks up and says that we are being over the top about this, I, um, I don't know. I, I I am pretty I'm I'm already kind of at the, the top level of mad. I can get none more mad. Um so I don't know what I they, they're not to be taken seriously. They're not a serious person. Well, they're not moderate Democrats. No. You cannot. Because even some Republicans have come out to be like, This is crazy. This should not be overturned. If we can't count on the court, then what's it for? Yeah, SC Cup. SC Cup had a calm. Had a column that was like, this is nuts. Can I just point something out real quick, Alyssa? Yes. I'm going to put this out there. Nothing creepier than a pro-life old man. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> if you're a, an, a pro-life old man, it literally doesn't affect you and you should just keep it to yourself. It's, But it's so creepy. It's like, not only were you of the generation where you were like, cigars in the waiting room uh, you know, we, you know, we don't really talk about like women need to hide their periods from us, like female body or anything that women go through reproductively is something that's upsetting and obscene to us. Like that generation trying to force women to give birth is, is, I'm sorry, nothing creepier. And I've, I've seen, you know, our arguments, I've thought this through a, a pro-life old woman it, less creepy than a pro-life old less man. Less creepy. She at least a, has a uterus. 
Yeah, or she's got some sort of like firsthand experience discussing it. She's wrong. She's wrong and she's she's maybe evil. But as the court would say, she has standing. She has standing. Exactly. That's a good way of putting it. Thank you so much. I would say a pro-life young man probably has has a lot to learn. And and there's, you know, there's room for him to be like, wow, I am a stupid bitch as he gets older. Um, but a pro-life old man, nothing creepier. Um, I, I I can't emphasize that enough. I also was just thinking, I, you know, there's nothing really to be done. That's the thing. Um, there's a part of me that I don't like to really get in on the speculation of like castle intrigue of who leaked it. Um, but my two favorite theories that I've come up with in my addled brain are who leaked this? Uh, the question that we should ask is who is the craziest person with access to the Supreme Court? Because leaking this was like a crazy move, right? Crazy. It's either crazy or it's heroic. chaotic. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. Who is, that is who is the most chaotic person with access to the Supreme Court? So my first thought about a chaotic person on the right that has access to the Supreme Court stuff, Jenny Thomas is pure chaos. Oh. Um, so that's my – this is based on nothing. Oh, my I've, God, Erin. I have to be honest. She had not even crossed my mind. She is the perfect villain slash – egomaniac to be like this is how we're gonna lock this in and right right Right. she says frickin in text messages she is frickin chaotic could you imagine people say we say fuck a lot give me fuck a hundred times over frickin i mean it is there's nothing like obscene use the word you mean frickin is is borderline obscenity to me i find it i find it upsetting um I want to I I also want to say if if people are listening with kids this week like we're going to earn the e the for yes. explicit Please. we're going to earn the e so like unless your kids are pretty advanced and you're like these funny ladies sometimes say the word come um you should maybe <laughs> Maybe this would be an episode to to turn the volume down or listen when you're drinking wine alone in your car, um, which is something that I did. I drove two blocks away the other day, and I had a can of wine alone in my car. And it's just a little effervescent treat to get you through. Two blocks. Came home. I was like, okay, ready to take <laughs> on the world. So, yes, we have Ginny Thomas as, a, as an agent of chaos on the right. I don't know enough about chaotic entities on the left to make a guess. The most chaotic upon chaotic because it would be an unchaotic choice which would make it the most chaotic of all would be if it was John Roberts because he was maybe trying to convince these people on the conservative side like look you are so out of step with what people think you sound insane look Look it. Just look. You know, it's like the feeling of when you're have you ever been having a conversation with someone and you're like, you are wrong. And so you like Google the answer and you're like, ha. I feel like Roberts could have been like, you guys are nuts. Okay. Well, let's let's see. Let's see what's right. And let's uh, see what happens. Right. Exactly. And so he's like doing an investigation, but really he's like, hmm, who could it be? And it was like, he's like, we'll not investigate my, let's not investigate me. How could it be? It's like, it was like John Roberts wearing like a a mustache and a, and a trench coat or whatever. (laughs) Um, But I don't know who the most chaotic person would be on the left. I mean, Breyer's retiring. He could just be like, bye. And that could be, but he's such an institutionalist that I can't see him doing that. No, I mean, I feel like it was just a really good-hearted, scared intern or clerk. Like someone who when we find out someday, we're going to be like, oh, this is like how Elizabeth Holmes was taken down by George Schultz's grandson. Like it's going to end up being just this person who we learn about and we're like, what a brave, I get brave. He's Whoever did this is brave, no matter what, because they will get found out. They are chaotic <laughs> I say they're they are chaotic. chaotic. They, I say they're You're chaotic. Right. You know what? You're I right. Know. I am removing the word. They are chaotic. <laughs> they are. It's pure chaos. I mean, and it it fits in the theme of 2022. It's just this year is chaos. That's the vibe. We're we're doing we're doing chaos. Um. So the way forward is there's really 
no way forward. There's a part of me that thinks that all of the protesting um, and the talk of a women's strike where we just do the, what Iceland did and we take a day where we're like, we're not doing anything. Um, I feel like that feeds this Alito-esque right-wing narrative that they're the ones who are the victims here and that, oh, we're, we've, we've triggered the libs. And I feel like it, like a similar type of um, energy in terms of like voter energy. I'm not talking about like vibes. Um, voter energy that that we saw on the right during the Kavanaugh hearings when people were like, oh, yeah, well, you hate this. Well, we're going to do it anyway, and we're going to do it even more than we would have done it had you not protested, which I, I don't know. I'm like making myself dizzy. Um, do you have any sort of half joking measures for the way forward here, Alyssa? So, you know, Aaron, that I'm like an action-oriented person. I'm a doer. I make a to-do list. I check them off. I get shit done. And I'm like, what can we do here? And I was thinking and thinking, and my husband, who is a flame bomb thrower of sorts, he's just like, we got to burn it down. And so we were talking about it, and here was his idea, which I have taken the liberty of sharing because I've done my own work on it. We need – Okay. So I understand, I never want to hear, I really, really, really don't want to hear the word filibuster because filibuster is not going to get us anywhere right now because it's not happening, okay? Joe Manchin, cinema, it's not happening. So what we need, though, is for Biden, the administration, to go to the FDA, okay? And what we need is for the FDA to take, you know I have a hard time saying these two drugs, mifepristone and misoprostol, misoprostol, the two abortion drugs. And they need to be removed from this list. The list is called the REMS list, Risk Evaluation Mitigation Strategy. And it's for, you know, making sure that certain drugs don't get into the wrong hands and that everybody understands how risky they are. Funny thing about this. You know what's on the REMS list, Aaron? Opioids, antipsychotics, and these two drugs that are so fucking safe, they have a 0.4% chance of major complications. They are effective 99.6% of the time. During Whoa. COVID, yes, during COVID, the FDA let them be sent by mail. They have to be prescribed by a doctor. You used to have to take the first dose in front of a doctor, but not anymore. So, Aaron, USPS, federal, FDA, federal, they have to figure out a way to get these abortion pills to people easily. There needs to be a clearinghouse. If you can use telemedicine to get a medical marijuana license, it feels like you should be able to come up with a solution that's a workaround to get women these pills. Erin, I know it sounds like I'm putting drugs in the mail, blah, 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 but people can figure this out. We have come a long way. Telemedicine. These drugs are fucking safe. They're so fucking safe. And we have the Postal Service. Let's get it going. Hmm. That's an interesting temporary solution for sure. Um, also, I just need to add one last thing. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has been trying to get these off the REMS list for years. Like I've said, I have taken the abortion pill before. I had an abortion with uh, with medicinal well, – I, I did it that way uh, – that does not get you high in any way. It's not going to get addicted. <laughs> not no. getting addicted. It's not like a fun drug. It's not like, woo. Not going to overdose gonna, with two pills. Right. It's not like, woo, going to do some online shopping now that I've taken my mifeprestone. I'm like, <laughs> it's it's like a, it's a, just a, it's a drug that has a job and it does the job and there's no like risk of abusing it. it. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's, Super interesting. And I think that just Thank taking so it much. off the list. I just wish Democrats would fucking wield power. That's my wish. They have the legislative branch. They have the executive branch. And I get that it is not Democrats' fault that Republicans are certifiable religious zealots at this point. Like, actually back out of an elevator, I'll wait for the next one crazy. Like, they are out of step with mainstream Americans 
to an extent that they should not be governing us. Something like 70% of people don't think Roe should be overturned. And yep. something that really that really upset me about the pieces of Alito's draft opinion that I read was the part where he, well, all the parts, because he's clearly a fucking raging misogynist with issues uh, with, with women um, who probably thinks the clitoris is a myth, I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> he said that women have considerable uh, electoral power, that women have the ability, we can just vote. We can just vote. But you know what? We have 100% of the uteruses and 50% of the vote. So how is that fucking fair? Like, how is that a remedy for the fact that bodily autonomy is not guaranteed by the Constitution for only 50% of the population? And the remedy is that 50% of the population can go out and vote with the other 50% of the population on whether or not we have control over what happens inside of our own bodies. Like... That is that is like absurdly stupid. We haven't really gotten into how stupid that is. It's like stupid. if I it's like if I lived uh next door to somebody and I was like, I want to burn your house down. And they were like, No, it's my house. And I was like, I don't like your house. I want to burn it down. The people across the street agree with me, we should burn your house down. You can vote. You can participate in a vote about whether or not your house should be burned down. It's still their fucking house. It's still my fucking body. Why do I have to split the vote on my fucking body? Like, oh, here's it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm I started off in a state of calm. I did some breathing exercises and I've left that state behind. Okay, so here's another thing. Childbirth is yeah. not nothing. Childbirth is something that everyone just conveniently skips over in this conversation. It is pregnancy. It is, oh, here's the baby. Oh, you can put it up for yeah. adoption, just like Amy Coney Barrett says. You can drop it off at a fire department can and you, you, won't get, you won't get arrested. I believe he talked about safe havens. Like, it's, what are you, who the fuck ugh. are you? You should have the baby and then you should just give it up. Yes. Okay, but guess so what? So easy. But guess what? Having a child, even if everything goes right, is a medically traumatic thing. It is yes. a medically traumatic thing. It is dangerous. It hurts. It's expensive. I don't understand. You know, are we kidding? Are we not kidding? This is like a maybe a new, a new. That's you know, for someone else to figure out. We're just saying our feelings and ideas. Say, we're just saying our ideas. Here's my idea. Let's show yes. up to pro let's show up to protest with pictures of childbirth. Let's show up to protest with pictures of fistulas. Let's show they're showing up to protest with misleading photos of what they're saying are dismembered babies, but that are actually sometimes medical waste from birth defects or procedures that have nothing to do with an elective abortion. Like a six week old fetus looks like a goddamn tadpole. Like, and it is so small that you can't, it's not sitting there, you know, sucking its thumb. <laughs> it is a little alien tadpole that contains the possibility in many cases to become a full living person, but that the body one third to one fourth of the time decides won't become a person at all and turns into a miscarriage. So like, oh, we need to show and put forward into the forefront here the reality of what these laws are forcing women to do. And that is give birth. That is give birth. Giving birth sucks. It's hard. Even though I wanted and want and love my child and might do it again because hormones make you forget. Um, it sucked. It was the worst pain of my life. I cannot imagine doing that to somebody who does not want to give birth. Like it, it is what why why have we been okay with the the discussion of Roe skipping over the birth part? The birth part is the part that fucking hurts. And like if and and Alyssa, you've been there, you've been my friend, you're an aunt, 
you're close with a lot of people with kids, you've been there alongside people and you don't get the rush of hormones to forget how uncomfortable people no. are in late pregnancy. No. You remember. You remember how I much remember. I, like you were I do. You, you know how much how uncomfortable people look. Listen, do you know how many stories I've heard about a ripped perineum? It's like and that's I not I can't imagine. And and that's not strange. Like that is not weird. No, it's you common. Know? Why aren't we carrying signs with like close up photos of a second and third degree tear? You want to get into what the law does. This is what the law will do if people who are forced to give birth. I went in knowing what I was going to get into, afraid anyway. Every single person I know who's given birth has wanted to and been afraid and then afterwards been like, I was afraid and some of those fears bore out. And I'm not trying to scare anybody from giving birth because it was like a crazy experience. And I'm not going to say that birth is is universally horrible because on the other end of it, if it is a wanted thing, what you have is a baby. But if it is an unwanted thing, I can think of nothing more barbaric to force somebody, barbaric. it's it's uh, it's like war crime level barbaric to force somebody to give birth, uh, and and we have skipped over that. I I'm like I am furious, <laughs> and and like and I'm not furious because it's like I want I might want my abortion. Um, I know that I will be able to have an abortion if for whatever reason when my family is complete I become pregnant again, or if something happens where. God forbid there is a birth defect or I won't be able to to provide it a life for a child or it would be more cruel to carry it to turn like there's so many reasons why a person like me like married in a stable situation would want to access abortion and would be able to and to that point here I am someone cannot biologically have kids could never need an abortion because I don't think I could have ever gotten pregnant or never did, right? And haven't and I'm not going to. And you know what, Erin? It doesn't matter because I'm still a fucking human being who has lived her whole life thinking that I had a choice in the matter. And I can't imagine. And the truth is, as we have said a million times over, Regardless of Roe, if we ever needed an abortion, we could figure out how to get one. It's bottom line. And so what they have done is just, uh, it is the word, the, the two words of the day, Aaron, are chaos and barbaric. Those are the two things. This has created chaos in a country and it is barbaric chaos because there are a lot of women who right now, today, don't understand, like, is this happening? Is this not? People are fucking busy. They don't have time to sit around and watch CNN and MSNBC and parse, like, what does this memo mean? Is it still legal? Is it not? Like, what's happening? And it is, uh, it's bar it's chaos and it's barbaric, all those two things. Your words are perfect. You're a wordsmith today. Am I? Am I, though? Mm -hmm. um, and here's the other thing. Just You're my quick. wordsmith. That's, that's very kind. It's, it's, um, very kind. Uh, how early is too early to start drinking? It's 9.36 in the morning. I'm not going to. Listen, can't. it's 12.36 here. So and we're on the same call doing the same job. So I'm just saying I'm I'm having I'm having coffee. This that's that's a that's a full. That's I'm having fully, tea. That's fully a joke. But I I'm just I feel so like hopeless and upset that I feel like I just need to like step outside of my body. And I'm currently breastfeeding so I can't have pot so uh, that's do you know what I did my... yesterday is my self-care what I took edibles and went to go see oh god an abortion at the Cherry Lane Theater how was that was it good it was sold the fuck out standing ovation for Allison at the end it was an emotional roller coaster we laughed as an audience we cried as an audience it was I can't think of anything more perfect um, mm -hmm. weirdly and she's a genius and people should go see it uh, if you're lucky enough to be close to New York right now and be able to get tickets to Allison Libby's Oh God, a show about abortion, definitely do. Um, I've been thinking a lot about a different, like a one woman play. I saw What the Constitution Means to Me um, oh. right before lockdown. Yeah, I was uh, there in, in LA, they were doing a, a, a version of it and I was on a panel afterwards um, with oh. some constitutional scholars. And I was like, yep, here I am. Da, 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 da. Um, you're like, let me tell you what I think. <laughs> 
It's incredible. It's an incredible play about um, a a lot of things that were awful about Alito's opinion and his clear views on who is a citizen, who the Constitution is for and who it's not for, um, who matters and who doesn't. It's so it's it's so perfect for the the time we're living in now. Um and I I don't know where you can even watch it at this point, but it's it's incredible. Um I wanted to I guess we should probably close. I, the, I I'm sorry that we can't really say anything to make anybody feel better. Um We haven't come with the tools today, but we've come with our thoughts and feelings. No, I do have a final thought and this is where we're really going to earn the E. Um okay. I think that, you know, this has been a, a, something that people have talked about, but like, you know, what causes abortion is unwanted pregnancy. And you know what causes unwanted pregnancy is coming, male, com- male coming. So men, if you don't want a woman to have an abortion, simply do not come, as Kamala Harris was. <laughs> do not come. Do not come. Do not come. Do not come. That is okay. But up bump. I need to highlight the Kamala Harris joke just for everyone in case they it flew past them. Do not come. Uh, and another thing that I wanted to say before we leave, I know we have we have male <laughs> listeners. Alyssa's snorting. <laughs> Alyssa's. I've like that was crossed. Really good. I have crossed the threshold, guys. I've lost my shit. My shit has been lost. Um, oh. fin- final thing that that I really wanted to bring up and 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 it's a am I kidding am I not kidding I'm only half kidding if you're a man and you listen to the show we know we have male listeners and they are like of a different caliber um agree if you're a man and you listen to the show and you're a man who is in a, re- a relationship with a woman you have sex with women uh you're in a or maybe you're married to a woman and your family is complete I think it would be a real incredible mother's day gift to offer to have a vasectomy. Snip, snip. Your, exactly. Because your 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 partner has already physically sacrificed to bring you your family. And um, I'm sure, you know, that's just the way that biology is. But it, it's like kind of a cool counter gesture for a man uh, to, to do that for his female partner. You know partner. what? Instead of with Hallmark, say it with scissors. Say it with scissors, guys. 